Hey everyone, thanks for joining in to this webinar on butt joints versus adhesive joints in FRP piping. My name is Dave Chapman. I'm the sales and service manager for RPS Composites, and I've been in the FRP business for about 27 years, so I've seen lots of uh, types of different FRP joints, and there's lots of comments and opinions on this subject, so I hope this webinar will clarify that for you a little bit. So what we're going to do is talk about the different types of FRP joints, um, butt joints and the variations on those, adhesive joints, the variations on those, the advantages and disadvantages of butt joints, the advantages and disadvantages of adhesive joints, a little summary at the end, and then there'll be some contact info at the end. You can always go to our website. There's contact info on the website, and if you wanted this to be a live event, um, it's no problem, just contact us and we can we can do that as well. So in FRP piping, there's basically four types of joints. There's button wrap joints where we basically butt the two pieces of pipe together and laminate, laminate them together. There's adhesive joints where we overlap the pipe somehow or another and we adhesively bond them together. Of course, there's flange joints and that's a whole separate subject, but uh, it's commonly used in FRP piping. And then there's O-ring joints uh, typically used in larger diameter FRP piping. So for butt joints, they are the most common type of joint used in the FRP corrosion industry anyway. Um, it's applicable to all sizes, all pressure ratings. You're going to see all sizes of shops, small shops to large shops using butt joints, and they are heavily labor intensive, and you're going to see that from, from the photos and videos I'm going to show you. So basically to make a button wrap joint, what you have to do is thoroughly sand the top coat, which has wax in it, off the pipe, fit the pipe to within about an eighth of an inch. You're going to apply a crevice paste, and I say liberally here because um, you're going to see in the next step, we remove the majority of that crevice paste. So I liberally apply crevice paste and then I grind off once it's cured all but, but the actual crevice. So all the little crevices are filled in, but it's going to get you a good bond that way. And the next thing you do is you take a pre-made glass kit. You saturate that with catalyzed resin. You typically would apply five layers at a time and you put that onto the pipe surface itself and you use a laminating roller to compact the layers and roll out the air. And if you had another sequence, so for example, if your butt joint had 10 layers to put on, um, those first five layers are going to heat up. It's called an exothermic reaction, so you have to allow that to heat up and cure and cool down, and then you put on the next five layers and you keep doing that until you have all the layers on that's required. And once all the layers are on, you can do a final inspection. Of course, you're doing that while you're while you're doing the laminating. But once all the layers are on and secured, you do a final inspection, make sure it's within the uh, allowable amount of defects. Uh, normally, as I'm saying, you're you're allowing one to cool down. You on a spool like this, for example, you may have several joints going on at the same time, so you're avoiding down downtime and you're and you're being efficient. And then once all the joints are done you're going to put a top coat over the laminate that has a UV inhibitor, sometimes pigments, and you get a final product like this where you just see kind of that hump in the middle where the butt joint is, the seam between the two pieces of piping or the pipe and fitting. And generally speaking, you'd wait about 24 hours before you'd put the finished joint into service. When you have a highly corrosive service, a straight butt joint is not actually the best choice to use. And the reason is, I said before, you take your two surfaces, you get them within as close as you can, about an eighth of an inch. You put that crevice paste in there and you laminate over top of it. But what can happen is the chemistry, the chemicals inside the pipe can sometimes work their way through that crevice paste if there's little cracks in that crevice paste because it's, it's essentially unreinforced. It has some milled fibers in it, but that's about it. So if chemicals get through that crevice paste, they can attack the, the structural layers of the piping or the butt joint itself. The easiest way to prevent that is to use an inside joint. So on the ID of the pipe, you just laminate the corrosion barrier on the ID of the pipe, and that's gonna prevent corrosion getting into the crevice paste. 
um, it's really only practical on larger pipe, typically 24 inch and larger, or maybe eight, 10 and 12 inch if I could reach in close to the edge. So for example, if I was laminating uh, a flange onto an elbow, I might be able to reach in and get at that inside joint, but it's really only where accessible. So the other way to do, uh, to cap the end of the pipe is to the way to get better corrosion resistance. So in this case, what I do is I have the same thing, have my pipe and fitting or my pipe and pipe ready to go. And what I do is I round the edges of the pipe and I laminate right over the edges. Now, sometimes it's just a donut style. That's just the edge itself. In this case, the red lines, I've laminated right from the inside to the outside and wrapped it right around the pipe. Sometimes it's just a layer of surfacing veil and sometimes in more severe services, it's the full corrosion barrier that I've put over the edge of the pipe. I then put on my uh, crevice paste and do my laminate as normal. And basically I've protected that edge of the pipe back maybe a half an inch or an inch as well. And this is a common way to give you a bit better corrosion protection with the butt joint system. The other way is to use a tapered butt joint. So I start off the same way. I have my two pieces of pipe that are sanded and I grind down right to the corrosion barrier. I put in my small amount of crevice paste this time. And now I put some of that corrosion barrier material between the seams, you know, uh, between the joint line. And essentially I have a continuous corrosion barrier. And now I laminate on top of that. You, you tend to get a uh, smoother joint, uh, a, less discontinuity, you don't have that abrupt change in thickness. Um, it's a good system, but it's very labor intensive. It's a lot of work to grind down those ends, especially on large diameter pipe and fittings. So let me show you what this looks like in the shop. So in this case, the uh, technician is grinding off that wax brush coat. He's got to make sure he gets all of that off because as I say, it has wax in it and you won't get a good bond to it. So the technician grinds off all of the wax top coat and then he liberally applies that crevice paste to the crevice. He's fit the pieces of pipe together. He liberally applies that crevice paste. He's got it all in, filling in all the little nooks and crannies. Then what he's gonna do is grind off the majority of that once it's cured. You can see here, he's uh, once he gets up to the top there, he's only gonna have a thin line of crevice paste left and he's gonna get a good bond when he goes to laminate over top of that. So the next thing the technician is doing is he's taking catalyzed, uh, sorry, resin that's been promoted and he catalyzes the resin. He mixes it up well. And now what you're gonna do is actually wet out uh, the layup surface. So you can see he puts some catalyzed resin on this surface here. You can see it's been well used. And he takes some of the glass reinforcement that comes from the kit and he saturates it with the catalyzed resin. And he's gonna do that for up to five layers. Because remember I was saying, you can only apply about five layers at a time. So the technician saturates that. Next, he's gonna apply the layer of woven roving. That's that heavier reinforcement you'd find in a larger diameter fitting, typically maybe a four inch and larger butt joint. You'd have woven roving in it. The technician wets that out continues on he's going to put another layer of chop strand mat over that and he's going to continue until he, he has all his five layers saturated one thing you're not seeing in the video the technician can also roll out these layers with a roller and you're going to see in a minute when he does that on the pipe he could also do that right here on the surface so he's going to put his last layer on here he's going to saturate that with resin and then what he's gonna do is he's gonna take some of his catalyzed resin and he's gonna put it on the pipe that's that's been fit and sanded. It would have been sanded within at least the last four hours or you'd re-sand it. Um, so that pipe has been recently sanded. He takes and he applies some of the catalyzed resin to it. Now he's gonna go over and pick up the, um, the laminate that he's saturated with the resin and lay it down over the seam, center it over the seam. You can see it's, all kind of rough and uneven and probably full of air. So what the other technician is gonna do is roll out that laminate. He's gonna roll out all the air in the laminate and compact the layers. And as you can see, it's a bit of a craft. 
you're just going to roll both directions. That's a little thing we call a pig hair roller. It's also available in aluminum style. Um, it's not an expensive item, but he just rolls back and forth both directions until he works all that air out of the laminate and he compacts the layers. He's going to keep going at this for, we're going to see a couple more seconds. He's getting it now. He's just got, got to get towards the edges of the laminate to, to get all that air rolled out. You see, it kind of pushes the air down and then he's going to push it out to the sides. And he's almost done. And there you can see what the finished laminate looks like. It's great quality. He would know what the acceptable amount of defects are. For example, an air bubble, one eighth of an inch in diameter, so many of them, something like that. Um, the QA department would also know. So then once it's cured, what the technician is doing is applying again a wax top coat. In this case, it has gray pigment. He applies that all over the sanded surfaces. So the layup and the areas he sanded past. You notice he sanded a little past the layup. So he applies that all over the sanded surfaces. He's going to allow that to cure. And then if this were in the field, you'd be ready to put that into service in another 24 hours. And you'd be re ready to install it right away. It would set up in probably 10 minutes. So that's how you do a butt and wrap joint. So an adhesive joint, <coughs> excuse me, it's a little different. It's very common in commodity piping and larger manufacturers. You're not going to see many adhesive joints in your small mom and pop shops, typically because they don't have the tooling to make an adhesive joint system. It is limited in the size and the thickness of the laminate or piping you can use. And basically, there's a couple styles of adhesive joints that exist. I'll tell you about that. And rough and dirty, it's going to be about half the labor of a button wrap joint. You could see that the button wrap joint's pretty labor intensive. The adhesive joint's gonna be about half that time rough and dirty. So I said there's two styles of adhesive joints. One of them is a socket joint and one is a matched tapered adhesive joint. So with a socket joint, uh, the big advantage is the straight socket goes together very quick because I just cut the end of the pipe and put it into the female socket. Um, it's only practical if the OD of the pipe is molded. So if the pipe is centrifugally cast and has a nice consistent OD, I'm able to cut the pipe at any location and it will fit into the female socket. So um, generally speaking, it doesn't offer the same kind of corrosion protection that you'd get from a tapered adhesive joint. And I'm gonna show you that in a second, primarily because you have that thick edge and relatively loose fit. It doesn't have the same kind of tight fit that you're going to have with a tapered adhesive joint. So on a tapered adhesive joint, I have a female end, but it's tapered. That's done in the factory, and the male end is cut on a tapering tool. And it's made for pipe that has a controlled ID, but the OD may be some, somewhat variable. You'll notice from the green line, one of the advantages of the tapered adhesive joint is it gives you a pretty much continuous corrosion barrier. There's only going to be a tiny layer of adhesive exposed at the edge of the taper. And it also gives you a very tight, very thin adhesive line. And because you have that thin adhesive line, you need to cure it with a heating blanket. So the steps are, like I was saying, I taper the uh, pipe on the tapering tool. It has to be done on the tapering tool. I hand sand the female bell end. I mix my adhesive and apply it to the female end and the male end. I bring the two pieces together and secure it in place. It's really important that I hold the pipe in place. If I pull out the uh, male end and put it back in, you'll draw air into the joint and it will most likely leak. I get rid of the excess resin and I'm going to show you how we do that. And then because it's that thin layer of adhesive, I have to put a heating blanket to cure it. And once the joints cool down, so once it's been on for the amount of time on the heating blanket and the heating blanket's cooled down, I take it off, that joint's ready to go. So that's a little different than the button wrap joint where I typically like to wait 24 hours for it to get fully cured. So let me show you how an adhesive joint works in the shop. So here the technician has set up the pipe on the tapering tool. He's checking his level and he's gonna put a clamp on to turn the pipe 
counterclockwise against the rotating stone and you can see in the field they have a rigid pipe stand set up to hold the tool. So the technician rotates against the turning stone. It cuts the taper. He can tell by the sound that he's getting to the end and the pipe is fully tapered. The machine starts to wind out, it gets a high pitch. He makes a couple more turns and then he knows he's done. Um, he checks the end. He sees that the fit is correct, that he's got the correct taper length and he's ready to, ready to set up the pipe. In the field, you would use typically a turnbuckle system and pipe pipe stands. You wouldn't use a on a bench like they're doing in the shop here. And I can say that that tapered in, you can also get that done in the shop. So the pipe could come to the field already pre tapered and save you some time there. But in this case, the technician is going to have access to the ID. So he puts a ball of rags. We call this a pig clean out pig. He puts this ball of rags inside the pipe and that's going to help him get rid of the excess adhesive that's going to squeeze into the pipe. If you didn't have access to put a clean out pig, you'd have to be a little more careful and only apply about a 16th uh, to a 32nd of adhesive over the bell and spigot. So in this case, the technician has the adhesive kit. It's just a two part kit. He makes all of the BPO catalyst into the uh, vinyl ester resin adhesive and you stir it up. In the field, this kit would look exactly like this, um, except it would be in a half pint metal can. You're going to notice that the technician, after he mixes it well, he liberally applies the adhesive to both the bell and the spigot. Um, he uses a brush, though that little stick he has, the tongue depressor, that's what actually comes with the field kit. So you could use a brush or you could use a tongue depressor or you could use your fingers and you put on the adhesive. You have about 20 minutes working time before that's going to set up. And like I say, you can see he pretty liberally applies that because he does have that clean out pig. If you were doing it in the field and you didn't have the clean out pig, you'd probably want to limit that to about a 16th or a 32nd of an inch just so all the surfaces are wetted. So he liberally applies that that adhesive. You can see it's on there. Now what he's going to do is slide the two surfaces together. And as I was saying, in the field, you typically use some come alongs or uh, riser clamps to slide the two pieces together and hold them in place. It's really important that you hold them in place. You don't have to put a lot of force to clamp the joint together. You just have to hold it in place so that it doesn't move around and draw air into the joint. Now he takes out the clean out pig and he was holding the pipe in place while he did that so it didn't move. Then what he's going to do in the shop is he's going to tack a box on the end of the, the, the pipe to hold it in place. Again, in the field, you'd probably use a set of riser clamps or some, some turnbuckles and ratchet straps to hold the pipe together. Once he's got the pipe held in, in place, he's going to clean up that excess adhesive that's on the outside. He's already got it on the inside because he pulled the pig through the end of the pipe. He was careful to not move the pipe when he did that. So he's got all this excess adhesive. If you had more joints to do, remember you have about a 20 minute working time. Um, so you could use this adhesive for that. If not, you put it back in the can, it sets up and it's it would be landfill at that point. And then what he's doing is he's applying the heating blanket. You can see over in the right hand side in the field, I tape that heating blanket on, mark down the time, and I'm good to go. So that is how a tapered adhesive joint is done in the shop, and you can see how it's done in the field. So what are some of the pros and cons of both systems? Well, a butt joint, uh, one of the great things about it is it works for any size uh, of pipe and any thickness of pipe. It also works for any angle. So if my two joints are coming together and they're cocked by five or 10 degrees, um, I can miter the pipe and still do a button wrap joint. With an adhesive joint, it has to come in parallel, like 180 degrees to each other. There's no special tools required for a button wrap joint. You just need a mini grinder and some basic tools and that, that roller is about the only special tool you, you may wanna need, but those are pretty commonly available. 
a butt joint will have better bending strength than an adhesive joint and actually better than the pipe itself because um, I have the full thickness of the pipe at the seam and then I have a big thick laminate over top of it. So there's a lot of stiffness at that location. You do have limited corrosion resistance with a button wrap joint unless you cap the end or unless you use a tapered butt joint system. You can see in the video it requires more skill probably to do the button wrap joint and it is more time consuming. Rough and dirty about twice as much time as an adhesive joint. And it does require a lot of grinding and wet laminating. You can see when he was removing the gray brush coat, um, it's a lot of grinding. You definitely need a dust extractor or you're going to have a mess on your hands. And you will have resin, catalyst, and probably acetone on site. An adhesive joint, um, it is only limited to certain sizes of pipe and it has to be that specific thickness. And the mating pieces have to come together straight. Okay, so it's a great choice for uh, pipe rack piping, for example. It does require a special tool to cut that male end. You can't do it with a mini grinder and with our system, you have to use the type B taper tool. It does have better pressure strength than a butt joint and that's because there's less of a discontinuity. It's a much nice trans, nicer transition across the joint than you have with the abrupt change in thickness that you have with the button wrap system. And you also have better corrosion resistance with an adhesive joint, a tapered adhesive joint, because you can see it's pretty much a continuous corrosion barrier. Only that thin amount of adhesive is exposed, unlike the, the crevice paste where you have an abrupt amount of crevice paste there. And generally speaking, it's less steps in the adhesive joint. They're all very critical steps, but it's gonna take about half the labor of the button wrap joint and with the adhesive joint, there's very little dust and there's less chemicals used. It's just the pre-mixed resin and BPO catalyst. You pour, pour all of one into the other and you're done. So not a lot of fussing with chemicals. So in conclusion, you are gonna have butt joints if you have any large diameter pipe above 12 inch where adhesive joints are just not practical. So if you have any larger pipe, you're gonna see button wrap joints in the system. Um, you're going to use butt joints likely if it's not a standard liner thickness because most manufacturers, their adhesive joints are only made for specific thicknesses of piping. Um, you're going to use butt joints if it's not a straight connection. So if you have a miter or something like that, or you're joining to an existing piece of pipe where I don't have a bell, there I'm going to have to use a butt joint. If you have severe corrosion, you probably need to cap the ends or do an inside joint or do a tapered butt joint if you're going to use a butt joint system. Adhesive joints are more practical on small diameters, so 12 inch and below, they're going to be much less expensive, much quicker, and much more reliable once you're trained on how to do it. The adhesive joints, you remember, you have to use that standard thickness pipe, so typically 100 mil liner and 150 PSI rated. That's going to cover you for a quite a wide variety of services. If you look in our corrosion guide, uh, there's a lot of services that would be applicable to that standard 100 mil liner. And it is possible that you do adhesive joints in the shop and maybe in the field, the contractor only wants to be trained on butt joints. Um, that's possible, or they could combine them both into one spool. Really, it's it's up to you. So you could have a combination of butt joints and adhesive joints, or you could have uh, all butt joints, or you could have all adhesive joints if you have less than 12 inch diameter. So that's the, uh, the lowdown on adhesive joints and butt joints. Um, if you have any questions, please visit our website. There's some contact information there. There's some contact information below here. You see our advisor at RPS Composites email. You can always call us at 1-800-343-9355. And again, I say there's more contact info on the website. Please feel free to reach out for us. Reach out to us if you have any questions or comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks and have a great day.